Welcome to Insight. Today we are chatting with Juliana Shermer of the Regional Parks Foundation. Juliana has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Juliana, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. So the East Bay Regional Park District is, is quite expansive. Describe the geographic scope of the park. Sure. So the East Bay Regional Park District is actually the largest regional park district in the U.S. We serve two counties, Alameda and Contra Costa. We have over 120,000 acres that we manage and 66 parks. And what type of parks are they? Are they, are, are they all very similar or are there also wild spaces, more cultivated spaces, urban spaces? Of the 66 parks that we have, I'd say that they're really diverse. Some of them have open space with hiking trails, biking trails. We have um, lakes for kayaking and paddle boarding. And then we also have some more urban parks, and we're putting one together right now, as a matter of fact, that has our first bike skills training area and disc golf. And the, the foundation, what is its role? Is it simply to raise funds for these various, uh, for infrastructure projects and, and to maintain the parks? Absolutely. So uh, we were created over 47 years ago as a sole purpose foundation to support the East Bay Regional Park District. Uh, we do fundraising, we take land donations to support the acquisition of parklands, and we also support a lot of the programs that they offer. And then sometimes we do some capital fundraising as well to help build new uh, facilities within the parks. Talk about the acquisition of land, because land being rather expensive, particularly here in the Bay Area, one would expect that that would be an unusual occurrence. Is it that unusual? I wouldn't say it's that unusual. That's actually how we were founded, you know, 47 years ago when Kaiser Sand and Gravel wanted to make a land donation to the park district. And I think it was in their bylaws somewhere that they weren't able to do that. So they, we created this nonprofit organization to be able to take the donation. And since then, we've had a lot of very generous people who, you know, farmers or ranchers who want to keep the open space and the land, you know, for future generations. And so they'll reach out to us and say, you know, is this something that the park district would be interested in? And then we help facilitate the transfer. When you accept a, a transfer, uh, does that transfer come with funds to ensure that the land is maintained? Sometimes. Uh, I'd say most of the time we do a lot of that work through our legacy giving program. We have people in the community, you know, very generous who want to see that the lands maintained in perpetuity. And so we take all those funds and we um, have funds designated for each of the parks for their ongoing maintenance. And these are multi-use um, uh, lands. These parks have uh, use of, of, uh, by children and families and, and hikers and, and so on. And then there are also conservation considerations. How is that managed? You know, uh, it's not easy, I'd say. Um, you know, we, we have a purpose of, at the foundation of, we say, providing universal access. So a major mission for us is making sure that all underserved populations have the opportunity to enjoy the parks. So a lot of the things that we fund are campership programs, programs for seniors, transportation, uh, but you're right. And we also have the obligation to help conserve and protect the land. So we also do fundraising to help with wildlife management, open space corridors, um, some biology projects, volunteer projects. So um, we, do, we really have to try to um, have fundraising campaigns that speak to everybody. You also function as, uh, do you have a kind of a, an adjudication function in which you have different people with different priorities coming together as you're acquiring land or as you're managing land? Uh, do, you, do you help people reach agreement in, in terms of how that land is going to be used and what kind of activities are going to unfold within the park environment? Definitely. I would say that's more of the role of the park district, but we can help at the foundation to kind of facilitate that. We do a lot of community engagement activities. We help inform the public. Uh, we really like to get out and do the um, groundbreakings and, you know, the ribbon cuttings and, and try to tell people, you know, what new resources are available to them in the community. And then we have a whole public affairs wing of the district that kind of goes out and does more of the government relations and, and helping find out more about what people want to see coming into the community. Fostering a sense of ownership of the various parks. Right. And you're working with a number of munis municipalities, you're working with county uh, officials, and then you also are working with the park district itself. Talk about how that unfolds and what kind of relationships you have with these various officials and community groups and the, the district. Yeah. 
So again, you know, we work very, very closely with the district. Um, when we were started, it's, it's a very unique re relationship that I've not seen in a nonprofit before. Um, but since we're sole purpose and we do all of the fundraising for them, they provide all of us as staff members and they provide all of our space, which keeps our overhead really low. And then we in turn go out and do the community engagement and fundraising to support them. Um, we also do get involved with some of the advocacy work, trying to find out what bonds or park measures and things are coming out so that we can educate the public on, you know, basically just what it would do for them and, and why it's important to our communities to um, have those funds in place. In terms of the future of the organization, what kind of changes do you see coming down the pike in the next uh, three to five years? So, you know, I keep saying we're the, the best kept secret. You know, we've been around for 47 years, but we're relatively small. We kept fundraising at about a million to a million three. Uh, we run a, a pretty robust membership program, um, but it's just kind of been on moving status quo. And recently, the new general manager and our AGM of Public Affairs and the Foundation Board of Directors made a very a purposeful decision to grow fundraising, grow the role that the foundation plays in providing support to the district. So we've added some capacity to our staff. Uh, last year we raised about 1.7 million. We're on track to raise 2 million this year. So over the next three years we want to increase to 5 million annually. And then we're also going to undertake a capital campaign to help construct um, maybe up to five visitor centers within the whole park district. In terms of, of uh, the fundraising activities. When you are trying to expand fundraising, are these funds already tied to predefined projects? Mm -hmm. Or are you trying to strengthen yourself financially today so that you can undertake new projects tomorrow? At the foundation, we recently adopted a new strategic plan that takes us through 2020. And through that, we're really trying to diversify our fundraising. A lot of the funds that come into us are designated for specific parks or specific use, and that's great. Um, but it also can be restricting for us in trying to launch new programs or when opportunities come up at the park district, we may not have the resources available that we can designate to those you know, projects. Um, so we have launched this year uh, a new campaign. It's called One in a Million, where we're trying to find 4,000 people in the two counties that will give $250 a year. 4,000 people at 250 is a million dollars. So that would be all unrestricted and it would help us fund these new initiatives and programs. Let's talk about some of the programs that are offered by the foundation. Could you just describe the range of different offerings that you have? Sure. So every year we give about $250,000 to the district for their campership programs. Uh, they have uh, day camping for young people. They have one-week camps at an environmental camp out in Livermore that's just beautiful, state-of-the-art green facility. Um, the young people learn how to experience nature first and foremost. I would say, you know, we say that children are now disconnected. They um, are disconnected from nature. They don't understand the value of being outside anymore. No, you know, children aren't going out to play. So one of the things we do is we're trying to provide the funds for some of our inner city or underserved youth to have those same experiences. We also have uh, outreach programs. We, again, universal access. We want to bring people into the parks. So some of the programs we offer, we have a Trails Challenge program every year. Starts in January, ends in December. Um, it's free. People get a t-shirt. We like them to go out and experience at least five parks, complete five trails or 26 miles. If they complete the, the log at the end, we'll send them a pin. Um, <laughs> we also have transportation programs where we invite seniors you know, to come, we, we have a bus that will pick people up at senior centers and we take them out for an excursion, get a, go on a, a short hike, hear naturalist talk, you know, learn something about the wildlife. Um, we also have programs where we do, um, a new one for us, I would say, is we're helping with youth development. So at the district, there's over 400 youth that are employed every year, and we're helping provide some of the job fairs to recruit those youth and teach them about the different job opportunities at the district. Um, one of the things we're finding is not a lot of people are going into uh, park ranger positions anymore. So we like to provide those opportunities for them to learn, you know, what do they need to learn, what do they need to do, um, and come experience those programs. The constituencies for these parks are incredibly diverse. You have people of different backgrounds, different means, different exposure to nature uh, coming in. You have the various uh, school districts and the Oakland Unified School District in particular uh, experiencing the park. Mm -hmm. How do you interact with, with organizations like the Oakland Unified School District and, and with others uh, to ensure that the very diverse citizenry 
uh, in the East Bay uh, really gets the most use out of the park. So one of the programs that we fund, it's called Parks Express. And we will fund the school buses that will go work with the inner city schools of Richmond and Oakland and provide the transportation to come and use our parks. So we're always kind of working to bring the parks to the people. Um, and that's a really important focus for the foundation. So you, you fund some of the, these activities, but is it just a matter of transferring funds and sort of leaving people to sort of figure out, figure out how to experience the park themselves? Or do you have programs that allow these children to, to really benefit from the park experience? So we do have programs. One of them is called our Kids Healthy Outdoor Challenge. So that's for uh, children in the fourth to sixth grade range. It's a program where the teacher will actually follow a curriculum that follows set core standards. Um, so again, the, the school buses come, pick the kids up, they go and do a naturalist-led program with their teacher, and then they have assignments that they complete throughout the year. Um, and that's been a very popular program. It started just a couple of years ago. Um, it's now up to, I think, over 2,500 youth and growing. So we've been excited to be a part of that one. Um, and then we also have a program where we take kids out to Camp Arroyo in Livermore, and that's the environmental education program that I was talking about. Um, years ago, we had several school districts that would spend three days to a week in environmental education camps with their, their young people. And due to funding cuts and lack of busing and transportation, a lot of the schools started pulling out and they weren't able to attend. And so that's, I think, the, the role that the district uh, provides and that the foundation can provide is to make sure that those schools aren't left out and that they still have the funds and they can come participate in these great programs. Juliana Sherman, thank you so much for sharing the experience and the work of the Regional Park Foundation. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you.